I guess I'll call this clip God too because I forgot to elaborate on my experiences in administration for children's services where I was a goddamn baby snatcher. That's what I was. And I, I had set up a blog a long time ago called ACS Must Be Stopped. I tried to start a group. I almost lost my mind and uh, took, the, took the blog down. But I might come back at them because uh, they deserve it. I'm sure they haven't changed a goddamn bit since I left. Anyway, what I was about to talk about was I thought I was some kind of big, big shot, uh, big time atheist here. I uh, didn't believe in God and blah, blah, blah. And one of my big complaints to God, and I guess it's still my complaint to God, is if you're like all powerful and all knowing and ever present and you, you're synonymous with love, what did those children in Haiti or what those children in, 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 in Congo, uh, what did the Vietnamese children 30 years ago, what did they do to get you so pissed at them? So that was always my uh, my fallback position. If there is a God, I don't want to know him because he look at him, man. His sense of humor, I could live without it. Now, what I, what I saw in children's services was the families that I went into, supposedly to protect the children of, uh, which is a whole other thing, which deserves a, a movie, a, you know, a feature-length movie starring some, you know, really big-time actor, not me, but he could play me in the movie. And um, what we would, uh, what, what I found was people who really, I mean, if, they, if anyone in America, anyway, had this complaint, if, like, if God is so good, why, why does he let such messed-up things go on? Um, it was them. And overall, almost to the last, who expressed anything, and I didn't go asking people if they believed in God, but so many of them volunteered their, uh, their religious, their profound faith that there is a God watching out and a God who's going to even things out and make things right. And that, that got me to thinking, and I know that in these countries where there's so much suffering, that's generally the case. The people who have this complaint much more than I do, well, they're not, they're not voicing it, and they seem to want to be with God. So anyway, uh, that's, that was the part that I forgot, and I, I'm um, splicing the accident and the other God riff to this one. And I'm putting it on my blog under some kind of title about God. I think it was Saturday I did a little riff about um, senior moments and senior days, and I was having a senior day on Saturday, and soon after I videoed that little talk, that little riff, I had a real senior moment as I uh, was trying to get around a, a mess of yellow cabs uh, that was stopped by uh, Madison Square Garden. I had a slight accident, and... I think you know I've had a couple very recently, and that's kind of scary, even though none of them were serious, and I don't think any of them were my fault. They have this concept called accident proneness, and it means uh, it refers to someone who gets in a lot of accidents, but when you investigate each and every accident singly, this person doesn't seem to be at fault. Yet, there are too many. It's beyond um, statistical likelihood. So, obviously, three in a month <laughs> is not good. So, I was a little worried. You see the, the damages in the front. And, I'll, you know, it, it's because I was nosing around 
a pile up, not a pile up like an accident, but, you know, a bunch of yellow cabs that were stopped because people were coming out of Madison Square Garden. Now, I was sort of left dangling in the um, intersection, and I wanted to get out of there. Also, I knew that I could scoot around this mess and still get a passenger. That wasn't going to be a problem, getting a passenger. So why these guys all stopped dead there on that corner uh, is beyond me. But the guy in front of me stopped dead. I had to try to get around him. As I was getting around him, I, I, in my opinion, I got clipped. Anyway, it was scary because, you know, this is my job. And um, at my age, you know, what the fuck? I have to try to hold it if I want to work, and I do. So to make a long story short, Today, I had a little chat with the guy that does the accident reports at the garage, and I was kind of sweating, and it turns out, you know, it was over in two minutes, bing, bang, bing, very amiable, go downstairs, get the key to the car, and I've been working, so obviously I'm not fired, um, and that's, that's all to the better, that's all very good, and same car, everything else, so apparently my version of the event uh, he found acceptable, and, and um, that's great. But it, it makes me think about something else. You know, when I was working for Children's Services, when I first started working there, I considered myself something of an atheist, even though, you know, it, strange as it seems, as an atheist, when I was in real jams sometimes, I was like, oh, God, oh, Jesus, oh, somebody help me. And so I found, my, in a sense, praying. And I did some reading, and the um, some of the secular humanists, in two different magazines, two different articles, a version of the same story, saying that the human mind, the human brain, not mind, the human brain, the physical brain is wired for belief in God. I say, like, why fight it? Yeah, I, I don't really believe in the Bible stories and walking on water and stuff like that, but uh, I do think this everything that's, that's around us can't be a uh, coincidence and has to be part of some plan. And how I fit into it, I don't know, but I've been through some very tight squeezes where I've been saying, oh, God, help me, and something has happened to my benefit because I'm still here breathing and kicking and talking and blogging and driving and supporting the people that I have to support. So that's it for now. God bless you.